back. Now, if you remember, looking at if I'm looking at the um, the map, there was a personal room. QB lived here, as well as uh, built the place. Where can we find it? Now, there's a suspicious thing that you may have noticed as I was going back and forth through this door here. Usually, it zooms in on a door like this. Here, the door is offset. Turns out, it's a passageway. I thought for a second that the, the cursor was pointing down. It wasn't. Hmm. It'd be interesting if a uh, cloth could show up here. It's an interesting room. I don't know about trying to sleep with these skulls looking at you. Oh, trunk? No. Family crest? Hmm. Do these faces look familiar? Note of that time, Crystal and electric. Seems like metal might be here. So let's, uh, let's not go there right now. September 1st, 1959. This book is in pretty darn good shape for 1959. Dear Jeffrey, I am addressing this diary to you. I know you are only four and too young to read, but it pleases me. So he's 41 and right now. And 26 when all this happened. Tomorrow, the adventure begins. I start teaching at the college. I have made the decision to drop the title Sir and go by Professor Wimbledon. What do you think? September 6th. Five days later. This isn't a college, it's a f football fan club. No one wants to talk about archaeology, only the latest football score. They'll wake up when I show them some of my more controversial discoveries. I do, however, have a minor problem. My department head has given me a ridiculous curriculum outline to follow. I have conven conveniently misplaced it. November 12th. I miss England. While I like America, it is very lonely. I was hoping to form the kind of relationships with the students here that I had with my professors at Oxford. That doesn't seem possible. Today, I heard one of the students refer to me as Wendell Nutt. I'm going to finish it my... I'm going to finish out my teaching contract and then see what the future brings. I will go to London for a short visit for Christmas. March 16th of 60. I have purchased some land outside this little town of Mount Pleasant. 
When I saw the outcropping of rocks, it reminded me of Cumberland, where the summer house is built. The minute I saw it, I pictured a museum standing tall above the trees for all to see. Can't you see it, Jeffrey? An archaeological museum of the strange and unusual. A place where only you and I know its secrets. June 23rd. Today was a momentous occasion. It was the groundbreaking for Professor Windlenot's Museum of the Strange and Unusual. That was fast. I have found that Americans like this sort of title. The entire Chamber of Commerce was, Commerce was there, including the mayor. Had I attempted to build this museum in England, I would have been laughed at. But here I am respected and admired, and not because of my money. Sure. October 14th. The chairman of the Chamber of Commerce came to visit me today. He can't comprehend the need for secrecy during the museum's construction. I think he is a construction contractor, and greedier than I first believed. He grew quite red in the face as I tried to explain to him that the people of this town must know nothing about the museum's secrets. If they did, it would defeat the entire purpose of the museum. I must remember to write you a letter extending my apologies for my absence at Christmas this year. December 25th of 62. Dear Jeffrey, this is the third Christmas away from you. The museum is more work than I had ever imagined. Between arguing with the mayor and disputes with the out-of-town contractors, the museum will take much longer than I expected to build. I'm so glad I have your picture to keep me company. October 24th, 65. I just returned from Central America found some remarkable artifacts for the museum, but upon my return, the contractor informed me that the stonemasons had gone on strike. I don't trust this contractor, and I must look for another one. At this rate, the museum will never be finished. August 17th of 75 years. Mm. I can relate. I am now totally self-sufficient. When the mayor threatens to deny me an electrical permit, I order the generator from Germany. It was installed last week, and the museum is humming along beautifully. June 1st, 72. Your mother has broken my heart by asking that I refrain from contacting you. It is true that I have forgotten your birthday once or twice, but I have always written you and sent gifts. Perhaps it would have been prudent to have written her once or twice. But perhaps Mary Elizabeth is right. Your future is important. I miss you. And now I can't even let you know it. August 3rd of 72. I received a newspaper clipping from my accountant, Joseph Whitney, regarding your acceptance to Oxford. I'm glad to know what you were doing. I'm having a hard time getting up in the morning. I had a clock added to the tower observatory. I have set it to wake me up every morning at 5.30 a.m. It has no a.m. or p.m. version, so it will remind me again that it is time to eat at 5.30 p.m. If only I will remember to set it. October 73. The museum goes forward with several, ex ex several exhibits nearing completion. Today, the laborers installed the finishing touches to the mysteries of the... Deep. It is the first completed exhibit, and I wish you could see it. The current laborers are from Mexico and are very patient with my rusty Spanish. We get along well, and the work is going faster with them here. February 27th of 74. My Spanish is getting better. The Mexican workers have told me a South American legend that I have never heard before. They say that there is proof of the legend in Lima, Peru, among the remains of a German archaeologist. I am more excited than I have been in several years. When the clock chimed at 3.15 a.m., the opposite of my 3.15 p.m. tea time, I was so excited, instead of going back to sleep, I got up and began writing to the authorities in Lima. May 30th of 77. After lengthy negotiations, I have convinced the local government in Lima, Peru to sell me the possessions of Siegfeld Schwartz. I am now anxiously awaiting shipment of the artifacts. 
July 12th. The legend, pottery vessels, and stone tablets are every bit as amazing as the Mexicans have led me to believe. The legend revolves around demon spirits that are imprisoned in the pottery vessels that I am now in possession of. Mr. Schwartz was rumored to have been killed by the spirits, and the vessels were so were so feared that the story made its way into Mexico. I was about to open one of them to investigate, but the Mexican workers panicked and threatened to leave. I decided to call in an expert to read the stone tablets. March 23rd, 79. Professor Edmund Rasmussen read the stone tablets. He said the original translation translations were very accurate, if overdramatic. I have placed the vessels in a tomb-like display of their own. The Mexicans became so upset and disturbed about the vessels that they left last week. They feared that someone would break the seals. I believe there is something mysterious about these vessels. I will have to curb my own curiosity. January 4th, 1980. Without the Mexicans, the final touches of the museum are going very slowly. I fixed another... I fired another team of workers today. I think I will spend the next few months devoted entirely to finishing my collections. I'm so tired of fighting with laborers. And there are still many display cases that need filling. August 20th. I made a trip into Mount Pleasant today, and a very odd thing happened. This strange boy with curly hair kept staring at me and taking note in his notebook. I say strange because I thought I knew everyone in Mount Pleasant, at least by sight, and I've never seen him before. He reminds me of myself as a boy. September 7th. I saw that boy again, or should I say he saw me? It was such a nice fall day that I walked to the post office. Upon my return to the museum, I noticed he was following me. He tried to be discreet, but failed miserably. Every time I paused, he would stop and write in his journal, or tie his shoe. Sometimes... Sometimes he tied his shoe, you just said that. I wonder why he's following me. September 13th. I decided to have my hair cut today, just for an excuse to see the young man again. I asked the barber who he was, and he said he didn't know his name, but that his father was the new professor up at the university. As luck would have it, the young man followed me home again. I had to struggle to keep from laughing, because someone else was following him. It appeared to be a rather pretty young lady, who was doing a better job of following him than he was of following me. This is becoming quite a good mystery. I almost hate to depart for Africa in a few days. September 17th. Two momentous things happened today. First, I received your letter. It was all I could do to keep from picking up the phone and calling you. Instead, I will write you. I want to use just the right words. After so long a time, words are very important. The second thing that happened that I finally came face to face with the young man again. He is working at the bookstore. Surprisingly, he asked me several questions about the museum. I purposefully stared at him for a long time. I know that was evil of me, and he got quite red in the face. At the very same instant, from behind one of the bookshelves, the girl that had followed him earlier was staring at him too. When I return from Africa, I will invite both of them to the museum and test some of my best puzzles on them. In a lot of ways, I feel for old, uh, old Wendell not there. I thought there was something... I thought there was something... Up. Hmm. Oh, I do think that you can... Oh, I thought that looked out of the tower. Ah, uh, well, that's it. No pieces or anything up here. But we got an important new clue. I'm pretty sure there's nothing in here. It's 
starting to come up with a bit of a problem though. I know. I know what to do. Or what to do here. Um, but after this, there are still two more lids. Um, well, I guess I know where one is, but where's. Where's the other one? I actually remembered the, the first movement I had done a while ago. Um, this one advances, I forget exactly how it works, I think this one, you, you, you go, you can click on one of the chains, go up to the cameras and look at the clock to see how it moves. Um, this, I think this one advances a couple hours, and this one goes back and then uh, one of these advances 45 minutes, and the other one goes back, it's just really weird. Um, yeah, doing the right combination, you can set the time to 5.30. Get a piece. Oh, this is the starburst piece. Okay. This one already, right? Oh, that's one of the bases. Yeah, I got that written down. Can't access this un this until you capture cloth. Okay, so this is metal. What's um? Let's see. What's metal? close. So it's going back up to the um, so it's going back up to the uh that's very much I don't want to do. If 
probably don't want to go back up to the room. This is just, yeah, it's just that hall. Nothing in there I'm missing. There's another place to look. Also racking my brain, thinking of what what parts have I not done? Well, at least he was there. Okay, well, next time I have one place to look. Otherwise, I'm actually stumped as to where the last load piece is that I need. Hopefully it's there. If it is, we can finish up.